At UFC 248, Yuanian J. Chek was defeated by Zhang Wei Li via split decision. Many people believed it to be one of, if not the best, women's strawweight fight of all time. Ben Askren reacted saying, what the fuck is up with JJ's forehead? Valentina Shevchenko says Joanna is the winner of this fight. Platinum Mike Perry says, best fight I ever saw. France Singanu says, what a war between Joanna and the Chinese machine, Zhang Wei Li. Congrats to both of them. Michael Bisping says, respect to both ladies. Kenny Florian says, both those ladies are tough as hell. I don't think anyone would be against the rematch. Jimmy Manawa says, look at the size of Joanna's head for fuck's sake. And Tito Ortiz says, broken forehead. Here's what Dana White had to say about the fight at the post-fight press conference. It's one of the best fights I've ever seen. Um, but yes, yeah, I think so. Um, right here off the top of my head, I would have to say yes, best women's fight I've ever seen, one of the best fights I've ever seen. Well, not only not, not only toughness, her cardio was unbelievable. That was her first time ever in the championship rounds, and she looked damn good in those rounds. And what was weird is the first round, it, it looked like her, her, her face started getting whatever, and, and this eye was swelling up a little bit, but then boom, all of a sudden, Yawana looked way worse than Whaley. And uh, did you see what those two girls look like after that fight, man? They're both in the hospital right now. They did not go to a press conference. They did not talk to press. They both went straight to the hospital. They need to go home, take time, heal up, and everything else before I even mention a fight with either one of them again, you know? At UFC 248, both Paulo Costa and Brian Ortega got kicked out of the event. Brian Ortega was escorted out due to getting into an altercation with the Korean zombie. And here's Paulo Costa getting removed due to trying to jump the guardrail after the main event. Yeah, he, he, him and the zombie got in a fight, which is completely unlike both of their personalities. And uh, zombie doesn't even speak English, so I don't know what the hell he could have said that would uh, get Ortega to start going crazy. But um, yeah, it was weird. Were there like punches thrown or? I guess so. It happened right over in the fighter section. It wasn't backstage, right? It wasn't backstage, was it? No, it was, it was over in the fighter section. It happened during the fight. He's got to calm down. I, I want to hear from a doctor. Again, they told me that he, he went crazy tonight and jumped over the K gate and was going crazy. We, 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 we threw him out, um, you know, and I just had to calm those guys down in the back. You know, he wants this fight so bad. Um, when he's healthy and a doctor calls me and tells him, not his like friend from Brazil, when a doctor calls me and tells me that he's healthy, we'll make this fight. Paulo Costa at the post-fight press conference reacts to getting escorted out. Paulo also has some very harsh words for Israel Adesanya. I jump because somebody tell me or oh, told me to uh, to be prepared or to be ready to go inside the cage. So I jump. That's it. But I don't I don't uh, try go inside the cage to fight nobody. Just to you know, just to say something. Just like that. Of course, everybody leave. Everybody leave from the, from the, the, the cage. But when I jump, some some people catch me and you know bring me out. But he don't deserve. It. Why I need to to wait for him for for tell something for for him. You know, he make a very very bad fight tonight. So I left about this. I will make him cry. I will hit him, hit him very badly, and he will cry like a baby. I will slap his face on my my fight against him, you know, because <laughs> that that's it. He's he's shameful. Yoel Romero speaks on his fight with Israel Adesanya. Yoel says that he believes he won the fight and shows that his legs are fine. You want to see? Um. Tonight, everybody lose. Not only me. Everybody. The fans, the UFC. And only the winner tonight is him. Only him. The fans for UFC, he loses. 
de los Money y los de espectáculo perdieron el espectáculo perdieron botaron su dinero para ver el pay per view he said the whole night was just a waste it was they didn't have the the, the spectacular outcome they wanted they didn't have the show they didn't have the gladiators they wanted to fight that's it UFC perdió también he said UFC lost because tiene que poner un campeón un digno un campeón digno de darte un buen espectáculo no va a correr que se vaya entonces para 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 He said that you need a, a dignified champion. You don't need somebody who's going to run the whole time. You need somebody who's going to represent your brand. So this is a, a contact sport. This is combat. You're going to get hit and you're going to hit them. He said that... Uh, He needs to find another sport, either either start running professionally or start dancing professionally. Israel Adesanya responds to Yoel Romero saying that he ran. Izzy also says that Yoel lost his chance at gold. I mean, it's not the fight I wanted to have. I had a different um, vision for how this fight was going to end. Uh, but it takes two to tango. You know, I can't force a guy to fight. I can force him to make mistakes, which I did a little bit by exposing his legs later on. but. For me, if a guy stands there for the first two minutes and just has his hands up, am I supposed to risk my belt and get clipped by him? Which I did. I and I realized, okay, that's a bad move. And I went back to what I do best, which is pick people apart. Um, but yeah, that was really bizarre. I mean, I might as well have just used a training dummy at my gym as my sparring partner. <laughs> you know, but. Yeah, it was just really bizarre because I was expecting a little bit more. And uh, like I said, crafty. These guys are crafty. These old, old guys. They're, they're, they'll do things and act like, oh, oh, why you not fight? I'm like, I'm chopping your legs up. I'm jabbing you. Why aren't you bringing the fight? I mean, you guys know me. I'm never in a boring fight. That's not my style. You see me in a, in a like, I overcome, even tonight, I over, overcame adversity. You see me overcome adversity again. I mean, before, in the Gaslam fight, you've seen when the going gets tough, when someone actually brings the fight, when someone actually comes after you with different looks, different techniques, not just one look, and that's just like a, uh, what do you call it, a wooden dummy, a wooden kung fu dummy, just standing there. You know, you see Robert Whitaker who actually blitz attacked, you know? I need people to try and take this shit off me. Keep trying. I mean, he lost his last chance at gold. Even in the fifth round, Come on, you, you attack. You see, you, I've, I've used the Gaston fight reference over and over again, but that's because, you know, I really showed out in that fifth round because I knew I wanted that belt. I wanted it more. Show me you want the belt. That belt was up for grabs, and I went to grab it, and I grabbed it. So show me you want the belt. Don't just roll up and then, you know, do the bachata, the merengue, and then, oh, come fight, boy, come fight. Let's just you. I'm like, these are, these are veteran moves. I think one of his tactics is try to bore you. He's done it with a lot of guys. He'll just stand there and bore you. And then you're just expecting something. And you lose concentration for half a second or a second. And then he catches you. You know? That's that's probably his only hope for this fight. I think that was his thing. But, yeah. I don't know. That was really bizarre. And it's not my kind of fight. But, like I said, check, check my resume. If you haven't seen me fight before, check my resume and see how I really f*** these dudes up. When you throw a jab, when you attack, you always leave yourself open. Every time I attack, I leave myself open. I take risks. I fuck you guys have seen my resume. I don't have to tell you this. I take risks. He didn't. He was 98% defense. He never went below like 85, 86% defense. He was constantly on the defensive and expecting me to attack so he can just open up and then attack me. And I, like I said, uh, yeah, I don't know. He's, it was bizarre. Like, I, I'm still going to watch the fight again and just marvel at it because it was interesting to, to be a part of. I was doing my work. I was the one moving getting reads i was the one jabbing i was the one attacking he was waiting for that game plan he had that one shot knockout power that he already landed and didn't do shit with so i was the one working the ref should have actually looked at him and said look you need to engage more because i was engaging i don't know i mean you guys you can have your own personal opinions but yeah
I was the one actually controlling the fight. That's gonna wrap it up for the news. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to Full Mount MMA on YouTube. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from Mr. Boss and it says, Yoel, fans pay for fight, we must fight. Also, Yoel, stand still waving arms doing nothing. The second one says, Izzy vs. Yoel wasn't controversial for the decision in my opinion. It was controversial for the boredom. And the final one says, it was a dangerous chess match. Izzy and Yoel are both highly skilled. Both the crowd and the ref were ridiculous. The crowd even booed when Dar Ryush and Close were fighting for the choke. Japanese crowds are much more knowledgeable and respectful about combat sports. The casuals in America are obnoxious. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next video, be sure to drop a comment down below on this one.